Wine lovers and traders from all over the globe came together to outbid each other for top French wine from the cellar of Paris City Hall at the Municipal Auction House of Paris. The collection included some of the best vintages from the last 30 years, bottles dating back to the days when French President Chirac hosted lavish receptions, as well as big tab meals in the gilded City Hall building. 5,000 bottles from the first-class ranks, essentially from Bordeaux. The great wines like Petrus, Chateau Petrus, Chateau Aubriand, Chateau Lafitte, Rothschild, Cheval Blanc, Ozon, all are present and in the greatest years, 82, 89 and 90. The socialist mayor Bertrand Delano decided to sell off the wine collection after an audit revealed its value had risen sharply over the years. In my personal view, I think that we are getting rid of them for the simple reason that to put a bottle worth 1,500 euros on the table at a function becomes insane. Do you think that Lord Mayor of London could welcome Tony Blair and serve him with 20 bottles of Petrus and throw 25,000 or 30,000 euros of wine on the table? I don't think so. The auction went for several days, and prices ranged from 5 euros for the less expensive bottles to thousands of euros at the top end for exclusive items such as a bottle of Romani Conti made in 1986. Stephen Williams, president of English company, the Antique Wine Company, won the auction for the two bottles of Romane Conte on sale, and he happily paid 5,000 euros for each of them. Williams also bought most of the bottles of Chateau Petrus that were up for grabs, paying 4,000 euros for each one. He was very impressed with the quality of French wine. My company, based in London, supply wine to clients in Asia, the Far East and uh, the United States, where people actually buy these wines and open them and drink them. And therefore, it's necessary that we know as much as possible about where they've been, because we guarantee these bottles. France makes the best wines in the world, and provided that they're stored properly, then they'll still be good. And here we are in the capital of France, in the City Hall, and so the wine cellar at the City Hall should be, you can't really get much better guarantee than that, can you? Wine connoisseurs, too busy to waste their time standing around at tastings, could soon hand the job over to one of these. Japan's latest robot is poised to take on the world's gourmets and sommeliers. Winebot is about twice the size of a three-litre wine box. At the end of the robot's arm is an infrared spectrometer. When objects are placed up against the sensor, the robot sends a beam of infrared light in the direction of the object. Part of the light sent is absorbed, but part returns and is processed in real time to determine the object's chemical content. By identifying the wavelengths of the infrared light that have been absorbed by the sample, scientists believe the robot can correctly identify the unique organic components of up to 30 popular wines within 20 seconds. When it successfully identifies the wine, the robot speaks in a childlike voice, adding additional comments on the taste and body of the wine. For the serious application, we can think of quality control. Certain food goods change or degrade its quality as time passes. With this function, this robot can tell the quality has changed without opening the package. On the other hand, this robot has a sense of taste and it can memorize the taste which we also find delicious. But of the thousands of wines on the market, the robot can be programmed to accurately identify only a few dozen wines at a time. It has increasing difficulty after the wine bottle has been opened and the wine begins to breathe and thus transform chemically. But Hideo Shimazu, director of the System Technology Research Laboratory, says the robot can determine very subtle differences. You see, the basic components of wine are basically more or less the same in any wine. The taste changes very subtly um, by a subtle difference in amount of the components. Because the difference is so minimal, the difference of the components in wine, we need to detect this subtle difference. 
that was the difficult part of developing this robot. Wine lovers at a recent wine tasting session in Tokyo thought the concept had some market potential. Philippe Bramaz says that the major auction houses such as Sotheby's and Christie's may be interested in the technology. I see a possibility in this robot to analyze the spectrum of expensive and old wine and to say whether they are real or not. That way the data of spectrum should be small enough for the robot to deal with. Auction houses such as Sotheby's and Christie's could use this technology to tell whether the wine is real without opening it. Developers estimate the robot will cost 100,000 yen, or $1,000. Next time on Desire, we try a $12 million diamond on for size and find out why the devil wears Prada. We recover some riches from the deep and sample the world's most expensive cigar. Operation, owner of luxury jewelers Graf. The rough diamond was found at the Letseng diamond mine high in the mountains of the tiny nation which is surrounded by South Africa by a woman who was sorting through the rocks.